Hello, and welcome back to What's Bubbling is Zim... I am Dr. Abstract, and in this bubbling, we're going to continue to look at some of the new things in ZimCat. So you can come to Zim at zimjs.com, and ZimCat is featured in this little section here. We pop on over, and let's have a look at the synth, a little bit of uh, talking about the new synth class in Zim. All right, first of all, sound, you have to recall that sound sometimes will not start or can't be started unless the user interacts with the application. So that, that was put in place by mobile initially, and then Chrome followed suit. I think Firefox still allows you to do it, but basically you can't rely on sound playing until the user interacts. So here we are going to turn the synthesizer on. This counts as an interaction, clicking this, at which point, we have sound. Now we've got new dials. There they are. And I suppose what we can do is turn on this thing right here, which randomizes those dials. Isn't that just so ultra cool? <laughs> do you like? I'm not sure what the volume's like for you. <laughs> Maybe we should maybe we should calm that down a little bit. Uh, you know, it, there we punched the dial and turned off all the sound. I actually had started getting queasy working on this thing for so long. Started getting queasy with all these sounds, and now I don't know if I want a, a relapse or whatever you want to call it. But here's the amount of wah. This is all adjusting the the wah on this thing. This is the rate. Yeah, this is the throat, which kind of like, ah, kind of compresses it. And this is what note we're acting on. <laughs> nice, huh? Okay. Huh. So, Zim Synth, nice, huh? Oh, I forgot to show you the waves. So here are the waves. Let's bring up a, a rate a little bit. We've got some throat. We've got an amount. Okay, you ready? Here, that's, this is a sine wave. That's just back and forth. And this one. Nice, eh? That's uh, a saw, I think. And this one is called zap. It's our own special wave, a backward saw. <laughs> nice, so different waveforms on that as well. Okay, that's uh, that's that one. And what do we do here? We'll just close that down. I think it popped open in a new window. And we'll go check out this next one. Oh, this is wire. And if we go in and dig into the code, it's probably better if that were an explore, a Zim explore. But we've got we've got some code open underneath here. We could take a peek at. Um, you will see that all those synth dials now are wired to the sound, so that as you change the dials and sliders, it uh, changes the sounds without events. All the events have been kind of moved in into the back and handled inside of the Zim ticker and stuff. So um, uh, wire would probably be a good one to do a specific what's bubbling and as like an important shift or it's an alternative, we'll call it. So why don't we leave wired, the wired aspects, and we'll leave the text editor, nothing to do with it. And we'll pop on into the multi-touch selector here uh, to check this out. Now this is loading a whole bunch of different sounds that can be used as waveforms uh, as seen down here. Now this is multi-touch, so... And then we also have that's the amount, and this is the, the vibrato. And 
and then we've got different sounds as well. So I'm now using my touch screen, by the way, to, to operate all of this stuff. Um, let's see, this is the upper side right here. And if there's one that starts with a C, yeah, this is Celeste. So. various volumes, <laughs> various volumes. So this is the multi-touch synth pad. Um, and uh, like I said, all of these sounds were loaded and they're different waveforms. So you can take a look through those and see how that's going. Neato, huh? That's, uh, that's a pretty, like each of these, the synth and this, they're fairly complicated apps built, uh, they abstract the JavaScript web audio and make that a lot easier. So why don't we take a look at one more in this bubbling and boop, da, boop, not the poly, but the cat. So the cat, if we go into the cat, that's a purring sound. Now that's actually, uh, not, it's a synth and synth has two modes. It's got a play mode and it's got a tone mode. And that purring sound is in the play mode. It's maybe not the strongest example of playing, but um, we can talk about it a bit as we go into the code. There's a, uh, a guy called Frank Force, and he made a way to play sounds that are sort of 8-bit type sounds. And uh, we talked with him about it, and we thought that was great. And so he said, yeah, put it in Zim. And so we put this in Zim. And at the same time, we wanted to make our own tones. And that's when tone came along. And all that synth work that you've just seen is a separate from, from that and quite, quite a bit different, or you know, relatively different. And so the sound that you just heard with the purring, this purring is playing a sound that you can make with his little tool, Frank Force's tool. Uh, this sound is the tone. So this is uh, related to the synth stuff that we just saw to make a meow. And what I thought we would do in this bubbling is just pop in and take a look at the code behind the cat here because it's it's a little simpler to look through than um, than the synth and and the synth pad. It will stop purring, by the way, and then you roll over it and it starts purring again. So that's what's happening there. Okay, let's drop her down then and take a look at uh, just quickly through some code together, shall we? So look at that, we're in Zimcat. Yay, this has changed a little bit. So we've also got a new CreateJS that comes along with it that helps out on a few things. It's 1.3.2. But then here, we're in a cat directory. This is 00. zero. So you can expect the next version of cat to be 01, I, I, would, I would think. So uh, that's what that looks like. And we come on down. Here's the cat asset. And now you may have noticed, uh, probably not, we did not pass the assets into the frame. So we just loaded the asset right like that. Neat, huh? And this will handle the preloading for you in behind the scene. So it's almost like HTML where you just put an image in there and it shows up no, no preloading. Preloading is actually quite handy for us though. It allows us to know that we were ready to roll. So it's, it's actually a good thing to, to preload. Uh, for the most part. But if you're a little bit lazy and it doesn't really matter that all the things haven't loaded yet and you don't care, then you're welcome now to just call the asset like so and it will do the preloading in behind and this temporarily makes a container and therefore that container will get the cursor, the container will get the scale, blah 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 blah. It'll, it'll be located in the right level um, things like centering, it's, it, we, we pulled some tricks to do things like centering later, because right now note that we don't have a size. So how do we center it? Well, what we do is if you try and center it without a size, we record the fact that this needed to be centered. And when the image comes in and we have a size, we rerun the center on that. Um, so the center just sort of takes a look at it and says, Hey, wait a minute, are you an empty image? If you are, uh, just record the fact that you need to be centered and it leaves center. It doesn't try. So it's not like it's t it's doing it twice and taking twice as much processing. 
it just uh, it just sees that it's not ready yet and it it backs out. So there was um, some neat things that we did in behind there. It's not just in centering; it's also positioning. So anything that relates to uh, a size. Um, gets sort of delayed until the image comes in and then gets applied. So that's pretty cool. You can, if you want, pass in the dimensions as the next two parameters here, and then that will override that sort of delay and it will scale it and do things based on, well, actually scale isn't one of those things. The container doesn't matter scale, but the, the issue is how do we center something if we don't know its, um, its size? Scaling is just, hey, scale that twice as big. I don't care how big it is. <laughs> so it, you can scale an empty container twice as big, no problem. Um, but positioning that in the right place, if, if you're trying to position it to the right hand side or based on its edge or, you know, et cetera, that's, uh, you can't do that until you get the size. So you're welcome to put the size in there if you so desire. And you also can read about that in the docs. So that's new to ZimCat. And here's the synth. The synth is new as well. And then here we are playing. Now, this kind of stuff is like, ay, 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 ay. Well, um, what's neat is you go to this, uh, this place right here. That's it right there. Do you want to see it just quickly? So copy that. And oh, desktop revealed. Whoop, whoop, whoop. That's all right. You can see my desktop. I don't mind. And paste in here. Although sometimes maybe it's fun to pretend that you can't. Oh, no. What are you seeing? You're seeing all the secrets. So this is that little library that I was talking about. Well, I, you know, who knows how little? Uh, well, Frank Frank Forrest is amazing at <laughs> compressing things. So it's like, you do know how little. This is like a 14K library. <laughs> That's it. Or even less. I'm not sure. The, he proudly announces how big it is. Uh, I, I don't know. It must be on his GitHub where he does that. But generally, you make a, a sound. Whoa, there's a sound. And what is this? Okay, that's an explosion. And then here's the meow. <laughs> that was my attempt at a meow using this tool. In the end, I just did it with the synth tone. But this was my very first one that I created, Magical Arrival. Are you ready? <laughs> that's neat. And all you do is you change these things about and you get sounds and you record them and he has some starting sounds on here. And then you take this bit down here and these numbers that you're seeing in, in this is what you end up putting into Zim. Ah, another desktop reveal. Well, maybe not quite. <laughs> Folder reveal. Here we are. So these numbers came directly from there. We just pasted them right, right in. Uh, and therefore, it's going to play that sound every time it purrs. And there's the purr sound playing again. So we stored the playing of the sound in a variable. And from that point on, we can continue to play it. Here's the, the cat sound. When we press down on the cat, we're playing a tone. So this is using the synth tone method versus the synth play method. So if you use play, you get to play all those cute little 8-bit sounds that you can make in the tools. So that's things like little jump sounds for games or, or explosions that kind of sound 8-bitty computer. Like, I'm not even sure if they are 8-bit. Maybe they're beyond 8-bit. Um, and anyway, down here, we're doing a synth tone and we're passing in the note that we want to that, a D, that's a high D, like D3 is sort of a middle D. The release is um, how long it is to, to leave or to end, and the attack is how long it is coming in. We've uh, It's just got a default attack, I guess, because it's not in there. We have the shape of it, so a square wave is the shape, um, volume, duration, a wah amount. So we've got a fair bit of wah amount and a rate that's making meow, like a wah, wah, sort of sound there <laughs> as best we could. We've got a throat on it that compresses the uh, the wah to be even, wah, you know, more wah. Uh, we've got some vibrato on that and a vibrato rate. There's also tremolo and a tremolo rate. So at the moment, the three effects we have on the tone, aside from the traditional like, sort of volume, and we don't, I don't even think there's any reverb, um, but there's a wah, which has these settings, and there's a vibrato, which has these settings, and then there's a tremolo, which has the settings. You can also uh, composite notes. So here we are adding more notes onto that to, to make it a little bit fuller. So that will sound more full than just a, a single note. 
as well. And where it says square, that's where you can also put in a whole bunch of these other types of synthesizer waves. And uh, we have those documented for you. They are available on the CDN, but if you're going to use all the waves, then <laughs> download them yourself. <laughs> if you're something like, I don't know, two or three megabytes of waves, we don't necessarily need your app users downloading all of the waves from our CDN. So go Go just grab those uh, waves. If you're doing one wave, though, uh, we don't care. That's fine. Don't worry about it. Okay, you'll note that the synth pad, which is what's using these waves, has a preloader on it, that little round circle that's spinning around like that. It actually does take some time to load those megabytes of waves. There's like, uh, I don't know, 60 files or something like that. Uh, they're data files, but the, there's still a lot of them. And that's about it, I think. Yeah, do you like? So it was so exciting. I mean, we'll do an explore on the synth and really take you through the code that, that went into the synth. But it was so exciting to work in a synthesizer. Uh, I have a synthesizer sitting back here. It's called a Moog, a Moog Satellite, or a Moog. And um, I played in space rock bands, and I'm able to recreate the sounds. You want to hear that one more time? You do, don't you? <laughs> just hear the, those random sounds going as we do our outro. It was just so amazing to hear those sounds. And this, by the way, is named after Frank. It's a Frank Force randomizer because he's got some randomizers in there. So we've just turned the Frank Force randomizer uh, on and here we are. We're doing a sound visualization. This is done in Zim as well using Soundwave. And then we're animating these things. They're all wired, so as we as these things get animated, they're wired to change the sound. And woo, woo this has been a uh, what's bubbling at Zim, and I don't even have to go. Blah, 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 blah. I think it's already being done for us. <laughs> what's bubbling at Zim? <laughs> <laughs> That's too fun. Uh, come on in, join us at zimjs.com slash slack if you want to say hello and find out uh, any questions and stuff like that. We'd love to see you there. zimjs.com slash slack. Ciao.